the death penalty in any given jurisdiction. Uh, and in fact, uh, some studies have concluded just the opposite. Some studies have reached the conclusion that having the death penalty and actually using it, actually executing murderers, has what's called a brutalizing effect. And it, it, it actually increases the homicide rate in jurisdictions that have the death penalty, particularly in the time frames shortly after um, someone is executed. Uh, I don't know exactly why that is. It may be because uh, people see this sort of state-sanctioned execution um, and think that it's okay for them to do too. I'm not really sure, but studies have established that. And by the way, I'm not going to offer you a whole lot of um, citations and authorities uh, in support of these propositions, um, but there are um, authorities in support of them. And, uh, most of the statements that I'm making come from this particular book, uh, Death Quest, uh, which I've used um, in teaching uh, classes on the death penalty in the past, uh, which was written by someone who's basically neutral on the death penalty. This is not someone who has sort of a specific agenda. Another um, argument in favor of the death penalty or in support of the death penalty is this concept of closure that we need to execute murderers in order to provide uh, their loved ones, their survivors, with some uh, closure, uh, whatever that may be. And it's really kind of hard to put uh, your finger on exactly what that may be. But Webster's Dictionary defines closure as a finish or a conclusion. And the idea is that by executing someone, the matter has been concluded or closed, it's now over, and people can move on with their lives uh, with, with some sense that justice has been served. And, and that would sort of make sense if we executed people um, convicted of capital murder within a sort of reasonable time frame after the murder occurred. And, and by the way, I'm not talking about sort of hypothetical um, systems of capital punishment that we could employ. I'm talking about the one that we actually do. I mean, certainly there's changes that could be made, um, but I'm talking about the reality of what we're dealing with. Now, this idea of closure, I'm, I'm all for um, being sensitive to uh, victims and uh, the survivors of murder victims. I'm not an insensitive guy. Um, but this, this whole closure idea is really, um, it, it, it's false. There's just not any truth to it. Um, given the fact that it takes something like 10, 15, 20, 25 years for a capital murderer to be convicted, I would respectfully submit to all of you folks that that's not giving victims closure. Uh, like I just said, the, the last person executed in Arizona committed um, murder 24 years ago. Many of his loved ones, presumably, are now dead themselves. Those who are alive have hopefully tried to move on with their lives. What our system that we have in place in my opinion, actually does, rather than provide closure, it actually um, re-traumatizes and re-victimizes victims for 20 years while they have to go through these endless trials followed by endless appeals. Many of those appeals result in second, third, fourth trials, additional trials. Um, they oftentimes have to testify again at a subsequent trial. And again, I've, I've never been in the shoes of a person like that, but I can't imagine how that really constitutes closure when it's, you know, it takes 20 years and you have to relive and re-deal with these issues for that long. 
And, and the reality is a, a lot of victims' families would rather not. Um, a lot of victims' families would prefer not to deal with that and, and not to have the state seek the death penalty. That's just simply a fact. Another argument that is sometimes advanced uh, in support of the death penalty is this notion that it is cheaper to execute people than it is to warehouse them uh, indefinitely. That's also a lie. That's an enormous lie. Uh, the reality is that um, our system of capital punishment costs vastly more to administer than it would cost to warehouse someone for the rest of their lives. Frankly, what our system of capital punishment does, and I say this with no disrespect to Mr. Catani, who I don't know, but it keeps people like Kent and I um, employed and, and reasonably prosperous. Nice suit, by the way. Um, <laughs> And, and it keeps a lot of other people employed and prosperous besides us. There's a lot of lawyers who make a living in the system and a very comfortable living. Um, as Myrna mentioned, I'm a public defender. So I don't make a fortune, but I don't make a pittance either. I, I do fine, thank you. And uh, we also have a, a whole cottage industry of paid experts that are involved in capital litigation. And those people all make money off the system. And there's a whole army of appellate lawyers and post-conviction relief lawyers and appellate prosecutors. And, and all of us are um, sort of enjoying the fruits of the capital punishment system. And guess who's paying for it? All of you folks, all of us. It's all coming out of the taxpayers' hides. And when I'm saying this is expensive, according to this book, um, getting somebody executed can cost somewhere between two and a half and five million dollars per person in year 2000 dollars. Um, the cost of warehousing someone for the rest of their natural life um, generally speaking, doesn't exceed a million dollars. Either way, it's a lot of money, but that's two and a half to five times as much money to execute somebody as it is to warehouse them. And, and frankly, in this day and age, it's just not a cost that we can really afford. It, it, it's particularly given the lack of utilitarian benefit that we get out of capital punishment. You know, when, when you're looking at the issue of cost, another thing you should keep in mind is that for all the people that the state seek the death penalty against and um, that they invest the money to obtain the death penalty um, for, more than half of those death verdicts are ultimately overturned on appeal. So really, for every person actually executed, the tab is about really twice what the actual cost of obtaining that verdict is, if you want to think about it that way, because half of them are reversed or commuted. Um, so that just makes it even more expensive. More than half of all death verdicts are reversed or commuted on appeal. Another argument in favor of the death penalty is this notion of incapacitation, this idea that we need to execute murderers or they may kill again. And it has some intuitive appeal, this idea. But again, it, it really doesn't have any realistic, logical support. That argument is flawed uh, for a variety of reasons. The main one is because, again, it takes so long to execute someone that they actually could kill again easily. Um, death row convicted murderers have been known to kill people in prison. It can happen. Uh, another argument um, in this same incapacitation um, theory 
is that if we don't execute people and we lock them up for the rest of their natural lives, they may escape and kill again. And kill one of us. I think most of us don't really care if they kill somebody inside. But they may escape and actually kill somebody on the outside. And in fact, you know, you may recall we saw um, some example of that with the situation up in Kingman where um, I believe at least one of the people who escaped was a convicted murderer, although I don't think he was a death row uh, inmate. Again, for the same reason, if it takes 24 years to execute someone, then those same 